In the weeks leading up to Ohio's November election, Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, I'm looking for a couple registered voters. Groups went all out canvassing key neighborhoods in an attempt to get voters to the polls. Are you registered to vote in the state of Ohio? On the ballot, the country's latest referendum on abortion rights. I am very firm on a pro-life stance. I don't think the government should be involved in personal decisions. A yes vote on issue one would allow Ohio residents to make their own reproductive health care decisions on abortion and contraception, while also prohibiting the state from punishing health care professionals that provide care. If passed, those protections would be enshrined in the state's constitution. A no vote would leave abortion restrictions to the state and would be a major win for anti-abortion groups who already have a law making its way through the state Supreme Court that would essentially ban abortion at six weeks in Ohio before most women even know they're pregnant. Women are not gonna have other people make up their mind, especially politicians. The temperature on this issue here is high. We are truly the battleground state in America to test whether Ohioans and the rest of America are going to be ready for abortion at any time. The state got its first taste of that leading up to a special election in August, something many saw as a proxy vote on abortion. The Constitution is under attack. It was important to protect my rights, especially as a woman. That's when voters rejected a GOP-backed proposal that would have made it tougher to change the state's constitution to protect abortion rights. Ohio voters went against that effort by a wide margin, 57 to 43 percent. You are sinners, gay events! So conservatives had to go back to the drawing board. Today, you all are marching for life and fighting to win. Searching for a new message to connect with Ohio voters as ads on both sides inundate the airwaves. Under this amendment, any kind of abortion is going to be fine. And abortion was our only option. Abortion has been on the ballot in six states since June of 2022. In each case, abortion opponents lost. Anti-abortion proponents landing on their closing argument in the days leading up to that November vote. We sat down with our friends in Michigan. We did an autopsy on what worked, what didn't work. We went to Kansas, we did the same thing. So it was our responsibility to take the good, learn from the things that didn't work, and then craft our best message possible. So that's why we took the last 25, 30 days to focus, retool our message, to make sure that all Ohioans, whether you're Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative, gay, straight, know that this is a bridge too far. I think when you just talk about abortion, then you're limiting who's coming out. Then it's just pro-life versus pro-choice. It's about much, much more. Mahek Cook from the anti-abortion group Protect Women Ohio knows that winning in November will come down to motivating more than just their base. We need all parents to turn out because our moral compass is being attacked for parental rights, for ensuring health and safety standards for our women. I mean, that's the crux. We're trying to set the record straight to ensure that all Ohioans know it's not just about abortion access. But constitutional law professor Dan Coble sees the messaging surrounding issue one as a way to avoid discussing what he considers to be the real issue at hand. What's very interesting about the messaging from the opponents is that they are incredibly anxious not to talk about the actual law that issue one will repeal. And that is Ohio's very radical six-week ban on abortions. I have numerous Republican friends who are horrified by Ohio's current law and are going to vote yes on issue one. There are people who don't agree with us who we have to ask to vote no. Despite both groups arguing that the issue is not one of partisan politics, politicians around the state are taking up the cause, including Republican Governor Mike DeWine. I know Ohioans are divided on the issue of abortion, but whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, Issue one is just not right for Ohio. The governor has always been pro-life. Um, he's made that a huge part of all of his campaigns and policies going forward. Uh, but the governor is somebody that Ohioans trust. People trust him to tell the truth. Well, good afternoon, everyone. The governor recently undergoing a messaging shift of his own. DeWine signed Ohio's so-called heartbeat law in 2019, a law that would ban abortion starting at around six weeks. The law notably made no exception for rape or incest, an area that DeWine walked back in recent weeks. It's clear uh, in, the, in the last year listening to my fellow Ohioans that the vast, vast majority of Ohioans feel there should be an exception for rape and incest. 
Anti-abortion advocates hope the shift sways more voters their way. But with that law tied up in the courts and not the state house, some question if revisiting the ban is even a possibility. There is a Republican supermajority, and this is something that a lot of pro-lifers have really kind of championed. Would there be an appetite to revisit this? I think we have to. I think that the way that people think about abortion has changed. And I think if you were truly a good representative, you were truly a good leader, you're going to listen to the people you represent. Okay. But regardless of messaging, both sides agree that victory may lie with those who can turn out the vote. Malala with Rebecca Jacob Driven. Progressive groups like Ohio Citizens Action knocking on upwards of 100 doors per person per day, encouraging Ohioans to vote yes. How crucial is it to knock on as many doors as possible? It's literally one of the most important ways that we get people to the polls. Abortion rights supporters say their other weapon is using social media messaging to reach younger voters. Oh, oh, how are you? If there's someone who's kind of on the fence, I mean, how, how, does, how does that play out? Government is sticking its nose where it doesn't belong. It's really about the dialogue that you have with them. People, if they don't have this access to this kind of health care, they're literally dying. And when you stand with another human being and have that conversation and make it about real human life, you can persuade them. And both sides are left to hope that those conversations translate to numbers at the polls. I was really encouraged that Kansas had the election and abortion passed there. So I'm going to do my part here to make sure it passes here.